Hi, so today, as well as receiving that 7 inch TFT display, I also received this 7 inch, although vastly bigger than that one. Uh, received this from China, someone on, well, I see Hong Kong, I'm just looking, $80.88. Right, this is the part number, $80.88 or £47.75 from Hong Kong, not sure, not sure the username on eBay, but I know it's on eBay, £47. Uh, so this is for my Digimess oscilloscope, I was going to sling it, I was disappointed as I said in the Digimess video, that Digimess couldn't supply a screen for me, I mean they're the... Uh, the resellers of the scope in this country, uh, also used by Omron. Uh, but this was my previous display. That's the cable it's got to swap over. And I pulled the polarizer off, but what happened? There's a little white patch here, and it just gradually kept on growing and growing and growing. But as I pulled the polarizer off, it's grown even more, just sitting in a cupboard. So I think these are quite fragile. And if one tiny crack, that crack just expands with a heat or whatever. So if you've got a Digimess oscilloscope or Omron with a uh, big display, actually it's not, it's a 7.8 inch. If you've got the, those scopes, be careful with the screen. Um, this was $38 shipping, £22.44. And DHL stung me for another £17 import tax as well, so here to the UK. So I'm going to fit this in my old Digimess oscilloscope, and, or this one, and hopefully it's going to work. I thought it was a shame I didn't want to throw the whole scope away. They're £470 new to replace, and it's handy if you're working on mains, powered equipment, TVs or whatever, and you need uh, to, to run the TV or lug. Like, switch my power supplies with them plugged into the mains. Obviously a battery scope, don't have to worry about grounding a particular pin. Just stick it on and away you go. So I'm going to put this in my scope and see if it works. Right, so I've put the screen in, swapped the ribbon cable. This is the screen and that's the whole oscilloscope. I'm surprised they charge £470. Mind you, on one don't they charge uh, just a couple of hundred pound, and I think seventy pound for a battery. But so that, yeah, that's the scope, uh, power supply and battery input. That's the inverter uh, for the backlighting. Don't know if that's a potentiometer or rotary encoder for the brightness, but they don't seem to work very well on these scopes. And and the screen, four screws, one earth in this corner. So before I put it back together, in case you didn't see the other video, this is the inverter for the power supply. Oh sorry, that's the inverter for the backlighting. And then the inverter stroke switch mode power supply to run the scope or charge the battery up. And that's for the USB port, these black wires over here. So give me a few minutes to put this front on, clip it together, two screws, job done. This has been abandoned, poor scope, since um, February this year. Right, here we are, seconds before switch on. I had to chop the inverter backlight wiring plug off, because A, the one on the screen was a touch too short, and B, the one on the screen had four pins, and this scope should have a plug with just with three pins. So I chopped the uh, lead off here, extended the new TFT panel, LCD panel, uh, and in case you want to take yours apart, your Omron or Digimess oscilloscope, lay the handle flat. There's a screw behind, a screw behind the ha handle there, one there and one there. Unclip it from this end, pop it apart. So just put the handle in like that and same the other end. Prise it out with a kitchen knife. So let's see if it works. So what are we in now? We're in 19th of June and this hasn't been running since... February or about that sort of time. So fingers crossed. I was thinking this maybe the battery's in flat. And it looks good so far. Apart from the contrast. Ooh. 
Yeah, this crappy contrast. It's never been any good. Hmm, seems a bit patchy. Oh, there we go. As I say, yeah, that contrast. I need something to prop this scope up. Except I haven't got anything. Ah, oh, solder maybe? No. Nope. Hmm, seems a bit yellowy this screen. Press any key to continue. And there we go. Hmm, so actually I can see the frame rate running down this camera. So if you can see that, that's the speed on this screen compared to the screen on the other chip on the this camera. But yeah, it looks nice, nice and clear. No white, horrible patch anymore. I'm not sure if I'll keep it for when I'm working on mains appliances or sell it on eBay. Probably find it on eBay in a few minutes. But not a bad scope. It has its its advantages, being battery powered. Here you can ground any point on whatever you're testing, uh, whether it's plugged into the mains or not. So obviously you have to unplug the scope. Uh, but I'm I'm just shocked at the price of this 470 pound, 20 meg plus battery power, two channel, 20 meg, 25 meg. Sorry. Um, the scope, yeah, it's not too bad. But it's, did you mess there after sale service? Why couldn't they say yes? You want this screen? Get it from this supplier. I shopped around for many many months and debated whether I should buy a screen or not. You know, throw out effectively like a 470 pound scope, or spend best part of 80 pound or a bit more with shipping. Oh, and import access, well, 90 pound. But then this is like a 470 pound scope. Yeah, I forget how to use this thing. So yes, back together. This screen looks nice and shiny and sharp from where I'm looking. I think you might have some flicker on this camera. But uh, yeah, dual trace, 25 megahertz. Battery powered, 100 megs a second sampling, uh, a bit slower than my Agilent, but then this, the Agilent was only twice the money. So anyway, if you've got a, a Digimess DS25 or an, one of the Omron scopes, which I know uses this screen, maybe you found this video helpful. Right, thank you very much.